What's up guys, it's Matt Collins Jones here, also known as D365Geek, and today we're talking about Power Automate and the Excel Online Business Character, and we're going to look at the action which is list rows present in a table. So as the name kind of suggests, this action allows you to pick out and list the rows in a table. We can also do some filtering, some ordering, and some other stuff with it. So let's just take a look at it. So in Power Automate, I have a flow here which has a manual trigger because this is just an action that we are running and we don't need to pass in any information from the table already. We want to pick all those things up as we go along. So we click on New Step. And we have the character right here at the top, Excel Online Business. So we can click on that one. And then we scroll down until we get List Rows Present in a Table. So we choose that. Next, it's going to ask me for a few pieces of information. So we need the location, the document library, the file, and the table. Now you can potentially get this from an action or from, uh, or from a trigger or somewhere else in your flow, but in this case, I'm just going to specify this information in. So in the first instance, I'm going to choose my location. My location being a OneDrive, I do also have other um, SharePoint sites in here, so all these are SharePoint sites. They say groups because they are Office 365 or Microsoft 365 groups, and each one of those groups has a SharePoint associated with it, so that's why those are there. But in this instance, I'm just going to choose my OneDrive for business. Next, it's going to ask me for my document library. Um, I have two. I don't know why I have two for OneDrive, but I do. Um, if you know the answer, let me know. Uh, I'm just going to choose this top one here. Uh, and then the file is going to be the file itself, so the, the Excel file that we're looking at. So if I choose the show picker, I have a list of my OneDrive folders here. I have put this in a folder called Power Automate, and then there is a book here called flowbook.xlsx. So we choose that one, and then that's going to go away and look at my table. So if I click on table, I can see I've got a single table in here called table one. Next, I can click on Show Advanced Options, and this is where I have some abilities to manipulate or, or filter the list of uh, rows I'm getting back. So we have Filter Query, Order By, Top Count, Stick Count, and Select Query. So Filter Query is going to filter the data that's coming back. So you can use an OData filter here and, and specify maybe a column that only contains a certain piece of data or after a certain date. So you can use the filter query for that. Order by just orders the entries that are coming back to you. So in a specific order, so ascending, descending, um, top count returns the number of returns the number to return to you. So you could specify this being only give me the top 10, top 50 sort of thing. Um, the default is going to be all. Skip count is the ability to skip over the first have many records and then just return everything after that. And the select query actually allows you to only bring back data that you want to reference. So you specify a column in here, which will be com comma separated. So a column in the table, and then it'll only bring back those columns. This is especially good if you have a large data set and you, know you want to bring back sort of like two or three columns, you can specify those and that's going to make your flow more efficient. I'm not going to use any of those, I'm just going to use this. One thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a new step and then I'm going to add a compose action uh, there. And then I'm going to put uh, the name in here. So I see I've got a couple of pieces of data like value, body, value item, name, age, occupation, etc. I'm going to choose name. And then instantly I'm going to put an apply to each random. The reason for this is that the values coming back are coming back in an array. So there's going to be more than one. So we're going to need to loop through and pull out that piece of data. The reason I do this is because sometimes when you have um, more than one record being returned to you, Power Automate doesn't always give you the the way to view that information easily and neatly. So I'm just trying to use the um, apply to each here and this loop through in the compose section so that I can just view that data easily. So we will uh, click test. I'll perform the trigger action. We'll save and test. And we will run the flow. Now, while it's running, which we'll uh, be doing in a second, 
And I'll click over to my book so you can actually see the data that I've got in my book. If you watch the last few videos, you'll know uh, this data source, but this is just an Excel spreadsheet that has these four columns, this table, which is called table one, and we have these names here. Now that I've been talking for a minute, the flow should be ready. Uh, the flow is finished. I can expand this, expand the compose, and we can see that we do have these records. So the first one being Wally West, John Stewart, John Jones, Diana Prince, Arthur Curry, and then Bruce Wayne. Clicking back to my Excel spreadsheet, we have Wally West, John Stewart, John Jones, Diana Prince, Arthur Curry, Bruce Wayne. So this returns back in the order that's in the in the spreadsheet, but you can, as I uh, discussed use maybe the order by you can also filter this so you can only bring back ones maybe with the start letter j or have john in the name um, or some other criteria for filtering it uh, and there we have it that is a way to easily and quickly list rows uh, present in a table so you could use this to say um hey i've got some data uh, we we collected data from a event it's all in the spreadsheet. We need to convert this data into records inside our dynamics. So this is a list of leads that we've got. You could just dump it into OneDrive, run the flow, list all the rows present in the table, and then create a record for every one of those rows inside of your dynamics as maybe a lead um, or do something else with it. So that's what I think I would use it for. But what do you guys think? What would you use this for? Let me know in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video, if you could like and share it with your friends, that would be appreciated. If you've not already, click that subscribe button and stay up to date on all my latest videos. I'll see you next time.